This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Hi guys, welcome to a Master Chemistry. So, in today's video, I am going to be extracting some pure essential oil from lemons and turning it into perfume along with a few other things. Because as someone famous once said, when life gives you lemons, apart from turning them into chloroform, you can also extract their oil. Also, as you may have already guessed, I just really like lemons. I also want to do this project to lay a foundation for future residential oil extraction projects such as making benzaldehyde from cinnamon or some real perfume compositions. Lemons are a great starting point because it should be relatively easy to extract the oil from them and this oil should have some nice properties which I will test out later in the video. Lemon oil is mainly made out of a chemical called limonin which gives it most of its smell and properties. Limonene itself is pretty often used as a lab solvent, but also as a food additive and of course in perfumes. However, lemon essential oil is not just limonene because it also consists of many other smell compounds, but they are present in very small amounts. So in this video, I will mainly just focus on the limonene. To extract it from lemons, I basically have two options. The first one is solvent extraction. I used it before to extract caffeine from coffee, but because I don't want my perfume to give me cancer, I am going to use a second method, which is a special form of distillation called steam distillation. It is a pretty interesting process that I will dive deeper into later in this video. Also, this is one of the select few videos on this channel that don't have a warning at the start, which means that this project is rather safe and doesn't require any specialized reagents or equipment, so it can be easily done at home even with a DIY distillation apparatus that I showed how to build in the distilling ethanol video. So if you want, you can also take on this project because it is really fun and easy while yielding some great results. Okay, so now that I roughly know what I have to do, I of course have to find some lemons. The Polish lemon tree from the Lemons to Chloroform video unfortunately went extinct, but I feel that I found a new way to get lemons from my garden. I just have to plant this very special seed in these rocks, and after waiting for a few days, I now have some fresh and even pre-packaged lemons straight from the garden. I brought them into my lab and karate chopped one of the bags to get the lemons out. They look like, well, lemons, and to see how they smell, I got one and shaved off a small amount of the peel from it, and as you can see, the whole lemon peel is divided into two portions, which are the outer yellow peel and the inner white peel. For this project, I am more interested in the yellow peel, since it is where most of the lemon essential oil is. It is very easy to see, because even when you lightly squeeze it with your hand, tiny droplets of nicely smelling lemon oil shoot out, and they actually have so much force that they can pop a balloon, as you often see in these weird life hack videos. Anyway, before I start extracting the lemon oil and making perfume, I need to tell you about a great chemistry supply shop, BM Chemistry. BM Chemistry sells a lot of difficult to get chemicals of high quality, along with laboratory equipment, pre-assembled setups and lots of other things, so I recommend you to check out their page, to which I provided a link in the description. To start extracting the essential oil from lemons, I firstly have to collect all of their outer yellow peel, which would leave me with a lot of naked lemons, that I have no idea what to do with, maybe I will make some lemonade or something, but I'm getting slightly off track here. To get the lemon skin, I got this hand grater which will be perfect for this job. I also got the lemons out of the bags and washed them out of habit. I know that it was probably unnecessary, but it's better to wash them than not. I then got all of the washed lemons into my fume hood on a plastic cutting board and started to grate their skin off into a bowl. This process is very time consuming, but it also smells very nice. It's pretty sad to think that all of the smell 
basically means that I am venting my yield into the atmosphere, but oh well. Also, my weak chemist arms hurt really much when using the hand grater, and on second thought, I could have probably just peeled the lemon skin off and thrown it into a blender or something, but now it's too late to turn back, so I have to stick with the grater. Also, I now feel like the universe doesn't want me to grate these lemons, because I now have school, which means that I can only grate these lemons in the morning, and even when I wake up at 5am, I only have a throughput of about 3 lemons per day. Nonetheless, I keep it going. Every day I put the bowl with the grated lemon peel into a fridge to stop the oil from evaporating, and after 4 days, I finally managed to remove and grate the peel from all the lemons, and I was now left with a full beaker of it. Also, after all of this grating, my new fume hood was completely covered with tiny pieces of degraded lemon peel, which made it smell quite good. To proceed with the extraction, I need a speed run of getting rid of them, and when they were gone, I now wanted to wait my lemon peel to later see how much oil I will get out of it. When I got my scale, it didn't turn on, which made my life flash before my eyes, but fortunately, after some master level electronic repair, I managed to get it to work and started weighing the lemon peel. I of course spilled some, but I am only a mature chemistry after all, so I guess that it is unavoidable. The final amount of the lemon peel came out to be 267 grams, which is quite a lot, and now I can start preparing for the steam distillation. A steam distillation requires a thing that we want to steam distill, which in this case is of course the lemon peel, and a source of steam, which is even more of course water. Before the distillation, I have to premix the ingredients, and to start doing that, I firstly have to get the lemon peel into a flask. I got my chunky 1 liter round bottom boiling flask, equipped it with a powder funnel, and started to transfer the peel from a beaker. At first it went quite smoothly, I of course spilled a little bit of the peel, but it wasn't a problem, and when everything was going so great, the funnel decided to clog. To unclog it, I used a glass rod, which worked pretty well, at one point even too well, I somehow smacked it so hard that it broke off a piece of the funnel that is now among the lemon peel, which is quite unfortunate, but on the bright side I now have a free boiling chip. Anyway, when I finished loading the flask, it was really quite full, I was worried that it may be a bit too full and cause trouble later on, but for now I had some more school, so I just sealed it with some aluminum foil and put it into a fridge. When I came back to it the next day, it looked pretty much the same, except that the volume of the grated lemon peel somehow decreased, which is a good thing. The next thing that I have to do for this steam distillation is to clean my glassware. I have to do that because I want to use the lemon oil for some culinary purposes later on, so it can't be contaminated with any nasty chemical junk. I cleaned the whole distillation setup with soap and water, and after that was done, I assembled everything together. I wanted to put a dripping funnel on top of the flask to speed up the distillation later on, but my new film hood is unfortunately too small for it, so I had to improvise. Anyway, the next day I was finally ready for the distillation, and to start it, I filled the boiling flask with about 400 ml of water, which created a weird lemon peel slurry. I then put it into the apparatus, filled the bowl with cooling water, turned on the pump, and started the distillation. As the lemon water heated up, some vapor started climbing up the apparatus, but they didn't look like water vapor and were in fact the essential oil. But how can essential oil distill over if lime onion boils at 176 degrees Celsius? Well, this is the wonder of steam distillation. You see, if you were just normally distilling some water, you would generate some steam and then condense it, but when some non-polar liquids come into contact with the boiling water, 
they can actually stick to the steam molecules and get carried over along with the water to be then condensed and separate again. This allows for most essential oil extractions and is also used in other areas of chemistry because of its big versatility. Also, a nice thing is that the vaporized steam oil mixture condenses to form the water and oil in separate phases and not for example in an emulsion which allows for the formation of these nice layers and drafts of oil. Anyway, I covered a part of the apparatus in aluminum foil for the distillation to go faster and after a few hours of heating, I now had a nice layer of lemon oil in the receiving flask. I occasionally added more water using a funnel to get out as much of the oil as I could and when it looked like no more oil was coming over, I stopped the distillation and allowed everything to cool down. I then took apart the apparatus and the lemon peel in the boiling flask looked like it had become pure elemental carbon. I suppose that it is because my heating mantle actually reads a lower temperature than it actually is, so it just basically extremely caramelized these poor lemon peels into a rock that will be a pain to clean and maybe even deserve its own video. The caramelized mass also smelled quite bad and some of that smell transferred over to the oil, which worried me that I accidentally ruined this whole project. Nonetheless, I decided to proceed with the oil extraction and what I have to do now is to separate the lemon oil from the water. To do this very efficiently, I could do a solvent extraction using for example hexanes, but I really didn't want my perfume to give me cancer, so I just settled for a simple layer separation. I poured all of the lemon distillate into a separating funnel that I double checked to be closed, waited for the layers to separate and drained the lower aqueous one. I am now left with a small amount of my precious lemon oil. It is pretty pure but it is still quite cloudy and to fix that I just washed it with some saturated salt solution, drained it into a small graduated cylinder and now after all this struggle I finally had some really pure lemon oil. The amount that I got is really small, it is about 10 milliliters and weighs exactly 8 grams. It corresponds to an approximate yield of 1 to 2 percent, which is well not ideal, but still enough for what I had planned. And speaking of that, the first thing that I wanted to do is of course the smell test. Ooh. Nice. The oil smells like a combination of lemons and oranges with a hint of burned lemons, but that's probably because I just overheated them. The reason why it also smells like oranges is because their peels also contain a lot of limonene, which is a major component of this oil. Limonene is a hydrocarbon, so it should do a lot of characteristic hydrocarbon feels, and to test one of them, I got some of the oil into a test tube and dropped in a piece of styrofoam. It dissolved quite quickly, which shows that limonene is a great non-polar solvent and it is really quite cool to think that I dissolved some plastic using lemons. For the record, styrofoam doesn't dissolve in alcohol or lemon juice, which makes lemon oil some kind of an option when it comes to dissolving plastics. Also, since styrofoam is mostly air, the limonene can dissolve quite a lot of it and here you can see devouring a whole block of it. When all of the styrofoam had dissolved, I was now left with this very goopy liquid, which burns and smells really well. I also wanted to see how the oil burns on its own, I got some of it onto a piece of steel and tried to ignite it, but that didn't work. In a second test, when the oil was on a spatula, it worked better. It is having trouble burning, since lemonene has no oxygen and tons of carbon and hydrogen, so to fully burn, it has to react with the atmospheric oxygen, which makes it burn quite slowly and emit a lot of soot. I also wanted to see how quickly it evaporates, so I got a drop of it onto a piece of paper, along with some water and ethanol, and to my surprise, it actually was the last to completely evaporate. Even after it evaporated, the spot where it was still smelled like lemons, 
This smell was really nice and without a hint of the overheated lemons. So now, I was really confident that I could make some nice lemon perfume. But before I do that, I wanted to get an expert's opinion on the smell of the oil. So I located my cat and listened to what she had to say. Okay, so now I am ready to finally make the perfume and the way that I am going to do that is actually quite simple. Every perfume is composed of two main things, which are the scent and the solvent. In your average perfume, there are tons of different scents made from many different plants and chemicals that are dissolved in alcohol and when you spray them on your skin, the alcohol evaporates and the nicely smelling compounds stay making you smell nice. In my case, the smelling compound is already an oil, but I think that it would be way too potent when sprayed by itself, so I decided to dilute it with some food grade grain alcohol. I'll mix the ingredients in this nice plastic spray bottle and decorated it with this DIY label, and my perfume was now ready. It smells really nice, just like a lemon without any side smells, when I sprayed it on my hand, it lasted for about 3 hours, which isn't that bad, and I was just so freaking happy that I managed to turn lemons into really nicely smelling perfume. This perfume is also an incendiary weapon, because it contains two really flammable chemicals, and when subjected to a flame, it makes a large fireball, which looks very nice in slow-mo. Okay, so now that I have made some real lemon perfume, there is just one thing that I wanted to do, and that is to bake a lemon cake. I know that this is a chemistry channel, but cooking essentially is just chemistry for those who fear death. I also really wanted to see if the essential oil will survive the baking process, and to test it, I chose to bake the most basic cake I could think of. I am not really good at cooking, as chemists often do, but I wanted to try my best, so I took up an old recipe from a random cookbook that I found, and started combining the ingredients. If you want to bake this cake yourself, the ingredients are in the description, and to flavor it, I added a milliliter of my lemon oil. When all of the ingredients were evenly mixed, I poured the dough into a long baking tray with some baking paper, and then disaster struck because I forgot to add the baking powder. I panicked a little because without it the cake wouldn't work, so I just sprinkled some on top of the dough and tried to evenly mix it using a spoon. I hope that this will work at least to some extent, and to bake this cake, I put it into a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes. When the cake was done baking, I took it out of the oven and honestly, it didn't look that bad. I mean, it wasn't as good as it could be, but it still tasted amazing, and the 1 ml of lemon oil made the whole cake taste like there was a lot of lemon inside. I am really happy with how it turned out, especially because it was my first cake made with the help of chemistry. And now after all this time, I can sit down and enjoy some lemon cake, lemonade and lemon perfume for the peak lemon experience. Also, I learned a lot while making this video, and thanks to today's sponsor Brilliant, you can also learn a lot of stuff in a free and easy way. Brilliant offers amazing courses in math, data and computer science along with much more. They have a very fun and hands-on way of learning that I personally use to expand my skills. Their courses consist of thousands of interactive lessons that cover basic and advanced topics made in a way that lets you learn at your own pace. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, you can visit brilliant.org slash amateurchemistry or just click the link in the description. The first 200 of you to click the link will get 20% of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Anyway guys, 
To those who made it that far, thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, I would also like to thank my patrons, especially Isaac von Liu and Lorenzo, as well as R2D2, Riley Reprobu, Joseph Kudi and MI for supporting my channel. If you would also want to support my work, you can consider becoming a Patreon, and see you guys in the next video.